So Barry and I have done come out here in a secluded area. <laughs> if uh, y'all had never seen that video with old boy that killed a turkey, he said, I'm out here in a secluded area and he was uh, turkey hunting us. It's kind of where me and Barry's at. There ain't no service, no cell phone service, but I got a guy wanting to rent this Hyundai HX85, probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment that we have. We're gonna get this dude unloaded. It's about quitting time and then I think the rest of the video today, or probably once I get home tonight, we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, little bit more of our of our of my elk gear and all my elk stuff. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be looking at follow the fancher, some of my boots, some of my sick camouflage I got. It's about time I've been shooting my bow a little bit. We we might even shoot the bow a little bit this afternoon. But first of all, I had to. I had to get this machine out here and get it to this guy. y'all can see minus the turkey decoy there's one of the everybody would say hey that would be the most important thing in the arsenal but i'm kind of getting i got all my stuff up here i'm kind of using the ping pong table as my uh, workspace but in this part of the elk hunting tutorial like i said a lot of people would think that the bow is uh maybe the most important part of what you take hunting but uh, i would say especially in an elk hunt and especially in the rocky mountains especially at 10,000 11,000 12,000 feet uh especially doing a lot of climbing uh that boots are the most important thing probably in your hunting arsenal now I don't necessarily, I'm not a big boot guy. I know you look at these, this is four pair of boots right here. I got two or three other pairs, some danners and stuff in there in my closet. I know you think, well, you got a lot of boots. I really don't. I'm not, I'm not like a lot of guys, although I sold crispy boots uh, for years. They're at Owens Outfitters, uh, Kennetrek at Sports Center, and I know there's tons and tons of different other boots uh, we sold Solomon at Sports Center. That's where I've ended up with these Solomon boots. I love my Solomon boots, but I'm not a boot connoisseur by any means. I have been, I have been really blessed that I've just, you know, I've never had a lot of feet trouble, never had any feet trouble, never had knee trouble, never had ankle trouble or anything like that. So it really never has mattered to me, even back when I did triathlons for years and years, it never really mattered to me what I put on as far as boots. Uh, you know, it just, they never really bothered my feet. Everything was pretty comfortable. Break in time really didn't matter to me, although it's very important. And those are some brand new sneeze. And I probably am just to wear them a little bit. But kind of what, what I do, I always take two pair of boots. Uh, if you're cutting down on what you're packing, then one pair of your boots you wear with you on your trip. Uh, the other pair you take with you. And that's kind of what I do. I always take these sneeze right here, and then I wear one pair of these Solomons out there. But let me talk to you about these, these uh, sneeze first. So I think this pair of sneeze right here is probably going on 20 years old. Okay, quick story. Uh, year before last, I could not find my sneeze boots, and I panicked before my elk hunting trip. So I ordered these sneeze right here. They've never been on my feet. One of my buddies called and said, hey, I think I found your boots. So I found my old boots. 
and I was super happy about that. When I ordered these, I didn't, re I couldn't remember what height this pair was. So I think they're 13s and I ordered some 16s. I have sent these boots back to sneeze. This is about to be, in 20 years, this is about to be the fourth time. Okay, sneeze, I think it's in Bozeman, Montana, uh, is where they are. So they take this entire bottom off this boot. They take it off at the seams and they redo this, this whole bottom. I love the sole on this boot. Now, it gets muddy. It kind of makes a mess, but I love it. But if you look right here, the reason I'm not wearing these boots this year is, look at there, you see that cracking right there? See that? So these boots need to go back to sneeze. I think this one is the same way. Yeah, that one's pretty bad right there. But it's, yeah, that one's actually got a hole in it. It has probably been, I probably hadn't sent these boots back in, in, four or five years uh i don't know maybe maybe less but they will rework these boots they'll put a new bottom on it they'll go over this upper i don't ever want them to change my upper my upper's in good shape i keep it treated uh it just i mean y'all know how leather boots are you have your favorite cowboy boots uh they will leave that the same they do give you a new liner Okay, so let me see if I can pull this liner out of here. They will. This is this is a wool liner. You can see this one's this one's kind of worn. You don't you don't have to wear this liner. Uh, you know, cool mornings. I really like these boots in the mountains, and this is why they do in the rocky mountains especially where we hunt is really really heavy okay so i like these rubber bottom boots right here in, in these sneeze when i'm out there in the mornings so what i do once i get back to camp or sometimes i may not come back to camp then i'll take those boots off if i do come back to camp i'll leave them i'll let them dry for tomorrow let the sun hit on them. They dry out good, but I love the rubber bottom waterproof boots. Uh, to me, just your your standard rubber boots, like your lacrosse rubber boots, it's just not enough boot. I don't have enough support, but I really like this, this sneeze boot. Now, it does have a negative, and the negative is they are a heavy boot, okay? That is a heavy boot, so... If you're trying to go light, if you're gonna do a do it yourself where you're trying to keep your, you know, your weight at a minimum, then that might not be the boot for you. Now, I don't really worry about weight on my feet. I know some of you may say, well, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. But I don't because I mean, you just used to them and it don't bother me. But that's the boot I wear in the morning. And then this Solomon, and I was I was gonna say, you can look, I mean. Look at the sweat stains, the salt on those boots. I've been walking in those boots a good bit here the last month. I've got two pair. This is the older pair. I don't remember which one. I was going to look on the tag. If you can look right there. I really don't know which Solomon this is, but let me tell you something. And this is the boot that all your all your special forces guys wear. That's kind of how I got turned on to them. We sold those Solomons whenever I was at Sports Center, and uh, I got me this pair first, and then I got me this pair a couple of years ago. And the only time, the only time I wear these boots, maybe not necessarily the sneeze, but the only time I wear those Solomons right there is on my elk hunt. I'm, I'm kind of weird like that, you know. Uh, I just, at my elk hunting, I'm not going to say it's sacred, but it's super special. And so when I get ready to go elk hunting, I know when those boots come out, it's just a, it's a feeling within me, blah, blah, blah. You may think that's weird. But that is when I get these boots out and ready. I don't know these these boots, especially that first pair. I mean that that pair of boots is probably I would say 
this pair right here with all the salt stains and stuff on them, I would say that pair of boots right there is probably 10 years old, lots and lots of miles. These boots have been in some really rough country, but that's my afternoon boot, okay? And you may ask me, well, why do you wear that boot in the afternoon? Well, in the afternoon, it gets super dry. Uh, there's no humidity in the mountains, especially at 10,000 feet. You can be sweaty and it dries that, that quick. Uh, and it's dusty and they are just a, they're a lighter boot in the afternoon. You know, you kind of tired, especially on day three, five, six, day nine, you know, and I may towards the end of the hunt get to where I don't even wear this rubber bottom boot. But most time I always wear the rubber bottoms in, in, in the morning. Now, these have a Gore-Tex booty on the inside of the boot. So you're, you're putting your foot down in a Gore-Tex booty. So they are waterproof. Uh, but the older pair, my feet, if it's, if it's really wet, really heavy dew, my feet do get wet. So that's another reason I don't, I don't like wet feet. I don't do wet feet. So that's the reason I wear that boot in the morning. Uh, Solomon. Both of them have great websites. I hadn't even looked at Solomon. I look at Sneeze a good bit because I just, you know, Sneeze is out west. And, 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 and I like that. I'm looking forward to wearing this boot this year. I, I've got to treat it. I have not, I have not treated it yet. Uh, may do a little video on, on the treating the boots. But <sighs> boots are a big deal to me, but they're not a huge deal to me. Now, I, I've, through the years... I have wore a uh, Danner, makes a Danner pronghorn. My dad wears it. Uh, I have some Crispies. I've worn them out there. Uh, Cabela's even used to make a pretty good boot. I wore those in, in, in Alaska. Believe it or not, you'll see dad because he's got his old bad foot. He wears a pair of lacrosse rubber boots. Uh, everybody's got different, different boot preferences. So there's not necessarily a right or a wrong or whatever it's it's uh it's it's mainly just whatever you like whatever you prefer and both of these boots have worked really really good for me so i like i like the sneeze that's the sneeze hunter 2 that that's just a leather boot with a rubber bottom they also make that with a with a buffalo upper but that's just the cowhide upper and then on the Solomon, I'm pretty sure it's the Solomon GTX. You can look them up. So that's that's kind of my boot preference. I also will tell you this. If you're going to be around a camp and you're going to be camping, uh, lots of guys take Crocs or Birkenstocks or what have you. You know, I just, I'm kind of a light packer. So I wear the one pair of boots and I take the other boots with me. So that is kind of my boot elk hunting tutorial if you will uh that's kind of what i do like i said nothing on here is written in stone uh next couple of days we're gonna go over the the uh v3x i'll tell you a quick story about this bow uh my matthews rep of old uh ryan winchell called me yesterday and we were we were talking love ryan have a have a great relationship with ryan he's going on the elk hunt he's not going to a little later so he was just talking to me about a higher elk hunt and when it was coming up. And uh, he said, hey, you still shooting that that uh, that uh bow I had you made? And I said, man, yeah. So this is the V3X. But uh, there is something a little special. I always write, pick a spot right there. I got my cross. So for years, I shot the Triax. Y'all know I don't shoot but a 50-pound bow uh, just because of my, my shoulder issues. And uh, Ryan, he was he was on me, on me, on me. He said, hey, you ever going to change bows? You ever going to change bows? And I said, yeah, you know, I'll change bows whenever you build me one. I said, you know, the, the V3X, uh, the V3, the V3X, the new Phase 4, they all come with 70-pound limbs, okay? Uh, I can't shoot 70 pounds. Now, you could get 60-pound mods, 65-pound mods, the 70-pound mod, and the 75-pound mod. But even with the 60 pound mod, I couldn't back it off enough to where I was really comfortable. So the Trax was the last bow that they made that you could get 50 pound limbs, 60 pound limbs, 70 pound limbs. So uh, he said, okay, let me let me work on that. So, 
you know, th this was early in the year, probably, probably, uh, April, maybe May and, uh, shoot, it probably wasn't probably two or three weeks went by and, uh, JD come back there and he said, Hey, uh, I didn't know you ordered you a bow. So Ryan went to the guys at Matthews and they built me a bow. They built me a V3X. It's got a green riser and I got the subalpine limbs, the same as my subalpine camo right there. And they built it with 50 pound limbs. So I was super pumped. I loved this bow last year. I had a great hunt shooting this bow last year killed that elk 60 some odd yards last year uh so i probably have one of the only 50 pound v3x's uh that matthews has so built we had a we had a good talk about that yesterday a good laugh about that yesterday y'all y'all see this used to be my hunting room now this is this is aiden's bedroom but We'll go over the uh, bow equipment here in the next video or two. I'll show you what sight I'm using, rest I'm using, and why. Uh, we'll go over the limb legs. Uh, I'll show you this real quick. Shooting, I've already got my arrows built. Already got my broadheads and all numbered. We'll go over that. And we'll start going over some of my gear, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. It's pretty simple. I got a pretty simple uh, process 28 years of going out there and doing it uh it's just there's not a lot of fluff it's pretty easy everything i got it's pretty much right there and right there and then i'll put it right here in my bow case and i'll be ready to go but anyway hope y'all like the boot tutorial appreciate y'all following the fanchers god bless jesus saves i'm gonna go eat some supper see y'all